Hello and welcome to your award-winning The Reasons I'm Broke podcast, bringing you the reasons we're broke every single week through news and headlines ranging from comics, movies, TV, video games, and more. I'm Daniel, and your other host this week is Maceo. Hey, Maceo, how you doing this week? I'm doing well, man. I, I cannot complain. What's up, Broquettes? Back on the show, the award-winning and hopefully future award-winning <laughs> Reasons I'm broke, man. What's good? Yeah, now 2022 nominated. We'll talk about that in the Brocap block. I can't wait. But this whole episode is going to be full of so much good news. But first, if this is your very first episode of The Reasons I'm Broke, the way we format the show is we go through a block of news. And then we end it with the Brocap block, which is the portion of the podcast where you get to know Maceo and I a little bit better and basically go over what's been going on since you last heard us. So let's jump right in and explore sector number 521. So kick this one off, Maceo, with what's apparently happening between Sony and Microsoft here. Basically, as we all know, Microsoft is trying to get this Activision Blizzard merger to commence, and they've been taking doing a lot of regulatory um, things between the FTC over here in America, as well as the EU and the UK. And apparently Brazil has a regulatory body that actually wanted to know what was going on with this merger. So they went and they went out to pretty much all the major tech and video game companies. They asked for comments from Apple. They asked for comments from Ubisoft. And they asked them all uh, basically a set of questions. And pretty much everyone that answered those questions was, including Nintendo, pretty much was like, yeah, we don't got a problem with it. We make games too. We make better games. We make better selling games. So, you know, if Microsoft wants to buy them, whatever, We who cares? And out of that group of people, out of that group of companies, the only one that had a problem was Sony. <laughs> they're the only one and basically sony felt like if call of duty goes into game pass or for whatever reason if microsoft decides to not honor their agreement that they had which was to keep putting call of duty on playstation consoles that pretty much their whole video game business it would just vanish like Call of Duty is the only thing that gets people to buy a PlayStation. That's pretty much what they were going with. So what they exactly said was that Call of Duty influences users' console choice. And currently, if you if you realize, we let's like rewind and we go back. So during the 360 PlayStation 3 time, Microsoft had the deals with Take Two. Rockstar for Grand Theft Auto 4. They all the DLC would come to Xbox first. Then they had the deal with Call of Duty, all the DLC, the advertising, everything. So over here, basically, if you saw a Call of Duty ad at the end, it would say Xbox 360. And then in the consumer's mind that's not paying attention, they're like, oh, I have to get a 360 mm-hmm. if I want to play Call of Duty. And then Microsoft got so big off of that, they gained so much market share, they figured that they didn't need to do these deals anymore. So when Xbox One came around, they didn't renew anything. So at towards the tail end of the 360 era, when Grand Theft Auto V came out, they Rockstar went to Microsoft, hey, you want to do this advertising deal? They said, no, well, we don't need to. We, <laughs> we already beat Sony in the U.S., we're losing. We, we lost in you know Japan as we always do, and we're almost neck and neck in the EU. But we beat them in the United States, and that's where most of the money is. So we're good. We don't want it. So then Sony paid for it, and then Call of Duty, same thing. Sony went. They outbid, and that one they actually outbid Microsoft, and they paid more money than Microsoft was willing to pay. But Microsoft was thinking, hey, we we beat them. We're gonna continue that momentum into the xbox one ps4 era 
and Microsoft failed. They didn't, they didn't keep going. They actually lost the market share. The Xbox One lost to the PlayStation 2-1. to one, And Sony feels like it's because of Call of Duty. And they actually even said that they feel that Call of Duty is its own genre. And that there's literally no game that can ever upset or beat Call of Duty. No, not a single developer, not a single publisher makes a game anywhere near Call of Duty. No which competition. Is a lie. There's, there's zero competition, which is a lie because, I mean, the, the biggest game out right now, the biggest games out right now is Minecraft, mm-hmm. Roblox, Fortnite, yep. and fucking Grand Theft Auto. <laughs> so that's like it the, with Call of Duty, it does sell every year a shit ton of copies, but so does Grand Theft Auto online somehow. So that that was their their whole stipulation with they were basically trying to tell the Brazilian regulatory board, like, hey, please don't let this go through, which it doesn't matter. Who cares? Like it, it's Brazil. Like well, they can't stop it from Yeah, why is it so Amer- significant? It's American country. It's not, it's significant because it's not significant that it's Brazil. It's significant because we know that this is the type of rhetoric that they're going to be passing to the U.S., to the EU. So they're not going to say this type of shit in Brazil and then flip around and be like, oh, we don't care (laughs) in the United States. So that's why, because the the United States comments and concerns through the FTC haven't been made public yet, but these Brazil ones have. So we kind of see where they're going with it. So that's, it was very interesting, their thought process behind it. And then Microsoft came back, obviously, and basically was like, it's, don't you find it odd that only Sony cares? Not even right. Nintendo. They make their own platform. and They don't even care. But only Sony cares. And they were basically saying like, oh, Microsoft said that Sony has their own core fan base that will only buy PlayStation. They don't give a fuck what's, what's going on with Call of Duty. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Which is true. Yeah. Now, is. I don't know that those people and the people that buy every single Call of Duty, they're not the same type of consumer. Right. The person that only buys Sony shit is not going to be the person that's like, they don't care. They just want to play Call of Duty. So if someone said, hey, you can only play Call of Duty on Xbox, they're buying an Xbox if they want to play Call of Duty. The PlayStation buyers are mainly interested in their JRPGs, regular RPGs, the stuff that's like Final Fantasy, all of that. It's a completely, like you were saying, different crowd completely. Call of Duty is more general audience, at least from what I remember from when we were working GameStop. And I was selling to people who that might be the only fucking game they bought all year. Yeah. The type of people that buy Call of Duty, they're just buying it wherever they're like, if they don't have the console to play it. They're just going to buy whatever their friends have. So if yeah. they, if, if the next Call of Duty was only on the new gen consoles and you still had the PlayStation or the, the PS4 or the Xbox One, you're just going to buy it wherever your friends are. So if all your friends have fucking Xbox Series X, you're going to buy an Xbox Series X and get the Call of Duty. If you could only get it on Xbox, you're going to do that too. Like You're not going to worry about the which platform it's on so sony does have a point there but the other point that microsoft brought up is that there's literally zero way if we do not put this game on playstation that every single person that has a playstation is gonna buy an xbox it's impossible so we would basically be throwing billions of dollars away if we do not put the game on the playstation and our shareholders are not gonna like that we're losing money Mm -hmm. like that So that's their whole thing is like Call of Duty will leave it on PlayStation because that's a shit ton of profit. Like we're not going to turn down profit. So So it's it's a weird, weird kind of situation. But in the grand scheme of things, what's going on in Brazil doesn't really fucking matter. We've heard some mixed reactions here, or at least opinions on some of the hosts on whether we think that Microsoft will keep Call of Duty exclusive to Xbox platforms moving forward, or if, like Scott says, why would they turn down money on other consoles and not also release that game on more platforms if they know they can benefit and get some money from them? Now, where do you sit on that? Do you think that even though Microsoft supposedly said, no, we're not going to keep things exclusive to just the system, we're going to put this on everything, do you think they're going to hold their word to that, or do you think they will do something like 
hey, if you want Call of Duty, you better pick up an Xbox or at least Game Pass. Get PC Game Pass. I don't know. I'm like half and half. I think the free to play stuff to like Warzone, the Battle Royale, I wouldn't be surprised if they just put it out on PlayStation. They don't care because like, as we already know, Minecraft is on PlayStation. It's on Nintendo. It's on PC. They don't care because it generates so much money that it wouldn't make sense for them to remove it. And even when they came out with other different versions of Minecraft, like they have Minecraft Dungeons, that's also on PlayStation. That's also on Switch. So it to me, I think that they will continue with at least, at the very least, the free-to-play stuff. Now, the mainline Call of Duty games, I think they follow through with the contract. So Sony has that advertising contract with Call of Duty. I don't know how long it's supposed to last. I believe it's supposed to go into 2024. After that, I think Microsoft just might say, hey, the free-to-play will keep it because, hey, that, that just generates so much money. Mm -hmm. But that mainline game, I wouldn't be surprised if they just keep that to the Xbox. Good. It kind of makes sense, but it kind of doesn't. Because, again, that is billions of dollars of profit that they're basically throwing away. And they can't sell... 40 or 50 million xbox series x's in a year they just don't have that capacity they don't have that ability so even if they did keep it away from playstation they would never make those sales up because they can't sell that many consoles that fast well here's the beauty so, of it this is what what my, my buddy michael pactor was talking about you can now download the xbox app on your fucking television so you don't yep, even need a yeah. console anymore so get game pass <laughs> yeah, that's gotta be on game pass and play call of duty on your tv yeah, that, and that's true, but it's like it, it's a different it's a different feeling when you have the, the actual console. You're playing it one to one with zero lag, and you actually it's all dependent on your connection to your router. Versus now you're connecting it to your TV through that. And I know they they're working on a lot of stuff with the cloud stuff mm. that's gonna make make it even closer to one to one. Get it in a better get it even better with latency and video quality that's supposed to be coming out later in this year or at the very beginning of next year so that might make a make the gap smaller but i don't know man like a lot of those players even though they're casual they'll still want the console so they'll get over it, it. it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah like i i don't think at least not for the next two to three years they're gonna still get call of duty that makes sense and did you he's, did you see that link that Bobby put up on Discord of some of these shady practices that Sony is pulling over paying off developers to blacklist basically from Game Pass? Yeah, yeah, and that was that was uh, Microsoft's rebuttal to the the Brazilian FTC. That's what I'm going to call them because I don't know how to say any of the those Portuguese words. Mm -hmm. uh, basically, they said, "Listen, like they can't say that we're going to keep our games off." off of their console and off of their platform when game, there's games that come to their system that they literally go and pay money to developers and say, do not put this on Game Pass. <laughs> like, we would want that game to be on Game Pass. They want to put their game on Game Pass, but they are not going to turn down 20 or 15 or 20 million to put it on Game Pass. They'll just say, well, we'll take the money from Sony Instead of the money, like Microsoft's going to give us 10 million to put it on Game Pass, but Sony's going to give us 15 to not put it on there. Let's do that instead. And then eventually down the line, after this agreement ends, maybe in five, five months, six months, a year, we could still get that 10 million from Microsoft. They'll still give it to us to put it on Game Pass later. So we might as well just go ahead and do it. So it's, it's all these, all these things have backdoor deals, like all, all of these little small indie games even up to the double a AA and triple a games they have these backdoor deals with microsoft and sony especially now that sony has their own situation going on they're they're doing the same thing like microsoft is going to be like hey we want to pay for this to be in game pass but you can only put it in game pass you can't take our money and then also take money from sony and then right. put it in their shit at the same time like you're gonna have to wait until it's been here for x amount of time then you could go to Sony. We don't care after we get our little five, two to three months exclusive 
And to Game Pass, go get your money from Sony. Just like so, streaming deals. All yeah. of them are yeah, yeah. It's almost it's the same shit. Like you think if I make a movie that's that looks fire, that HBO is gonna be like, okay, we're paying for the exclusive rights to stream this for like five or six months. Like they're not gonna want you to take their money. And then also go and throw it on Netflix. That's just common business sense. So I don't know why like people are all like, oh man, Sony's doing something wrong. Like that's smart. It's smart business. The problem with it is that Sony doesn't have the money to continue to pay developers over and over and over to, <laughs> to not get not put their games in Game Pass. So they have to pick and choose. See, that's here my point. And there, like, yeah. That's exactly <laughs> it. I to me, that's not a like I get you can't lose ground to your competition and that's how serious game pass is now where sony has to pay developers to not put their fucking game on there and how long are you going to keep that up how much money are they losing just by game pass existing and i think that's a testament to how good a service microsoft's game pass is microsoft's pc game pass too and it's only a matter of time before sony can't pay up anymore and eventually these developers like you said, they're going to have to pick and choose, okay, this giant game that everyone's playing all of a sudden, we need that on our our little PlayStation Game Pass thing, and we'll just <laughs> focus on that. And then everything else, though, they're going to have to give up to Microsoft's Game Pass, and it's not a... a they, they better hope that their their thing takes off, because if it doesn't, it's just, it's really going to be all Game Pass. Just, it's going to be hard, man, because if if... And I'm I'm like ninety percent sure this is going to happen that the Activision Blizzard thing is going to go through fine, maybe with a couple stipulations here or there. But when this comes through, and then they do the first commercial for Game Pass, and it's like Call of Duty, Diablo, yes. Overwatch, all in Game Pass for nine ninety nine a month. Like that, how do you how do you combat that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Especially with them saying day one. Day it's gonna say day one on Game Pass. Meanwhile, Sony has heavy hitter games. They got Spider Man. They got God of War, and <laughs> they got Last of Us, Uncharted. They got all these games, but it's not day one on their subscription. It's sometime in the future. Wow. It's gonna come. Not even day one. <laughs> like huh? it may, no, it's gonna be months, year a year in certain cases. So. When you have that type of shit going on, it's going to be difficult. Like even in this, Sony was telling the Brazilian FTC that, hey, like Microsoft already has a monopoly on game streaming, but they were specifically talking about Brazil. Like when they put out the games, the Xbox cloud game pass in Brazil, they had they had fucking cues for that shit. <laughs> like you have to wait. <laughs> to log in to actually play shit because there was so many people trying to play they specifically loaded up servers for brazil so that the the latency was as low as it possibly could be to allow players to be able to play stuff on their phone on their tablet without having to buy an xbox they had to do that and sony's like man we don't even have, we barely can spin up some servers for <laughs> our playstation game pass in brazil right now so Microsoft has like 70% sharehold in cloud gaming in Brazil. <laughs> so they're like, if you if they get Activision, it's gonna be like a hundred. No one's gonna buy our shit. In That's Brazil. not Microsoft's fault though. I mean, <laughs> yeah, should have played better. You yeah, they they chose not to get in the game of game streaming until it was too late. That's right. Like, you can't get <laughs> you can't get on Microsoft. Or actually, I can't even say that because now, but I don't know. If they had PlayStation out in Brazil, but they had PlayStation out, it was a game streaming service. It just wasn't fully fleshed as the whole Microsoft cloud streaming was. Well, but, those are the facts, Brazilian FTC, and you've, <laughs> you broke it down for you here. I think the decision is pretty simple, and that argument is, unfortunately, I don't think it's going to fly here in the U.S. Good luck, Sony. And make sure to get Microsoft Game Pass for Call of Duty for a bunch of great titles. I put them up on Discord all the time, every month. <laughs> Yeah, they kind of. It's been kind of light. I'm, I'm not going to lie. We'll get into it later when we speak about like the games we're playing. It's been a little bit light, but they it's getting it's starting to ramp up a little bit. Something that's not ramping up at all is multiverses right now, as the Warner Brothers Ensemble fighting game. It's free to play. 
will have its first season of content delayed to so far an unspecified later date. I don't know if since then they've gone into specifics, but at the time they did not have a date. And that was according to the game's official Twitter account. So that does include the delay of the release of Morty from Morty and Rick, which was originally announced for August 9th, which was the same day that season one was to begin. So right now, Multiverses is open beta, and it is currently available on Windows PC, Xbox One, Xbox Series X, and other systems with cross-play support across those other platforms. So you were talking about how this was... And this also happened the same week that Zaslif started canceling a bunch of shit. So it didn't look too good for <laughs> Multiverses, did it? No, man, it was kind of odd too. It was like, I'm like, man, you know, he's going crazy. <laughs> he's going crazy with HBO Max and, and the movies oh, and yeah. what they had going on there. And I'm like, I figured the the game side was pretty much set in stone. You got Multiverses. They're working through that. They got Gotham Knights supposed to drop soon. They're putting out a lot of trailers for that. So I didn't see anything saying like, oh, they're pushing back anything. They're canceling any games. So I thought everything was rolling through. Multiverses came out. But, and this is the crux of pretty much so many games coming out right now. It's in open beta. So it's not technically a full release, but people are playing it like it's a full release mm-hmm. and the content just isn't there. And then, then you come out, you say it's open beta. So it's an open beta, but then it also has seasons. But this is the first season of an open beta. Like, I remember this was a thing back like when Fortnite first released, when PUBG first released, where it would be these seasons. And it's like, guys, we're, we're still in pre-release. We're still in <laughs> beta. Like, what, what the fuck are we talking about? Like, put out the finish the game. Yeah. And then start putting out the seasons after that. Yeah, like I, I don't get it, but they have a lot. They have a lot of momentum riding with them. Yeah, I like the devs are on Twitter. They're updating the game. They're speaking about what's going on. They had some crazy sets at Evo, the fighting game championship that they have every year in Las or not every year because of COVID, but pretty much every year in Las Vegas they would do Evo, and they had a crazy, crazy sets. A lot of fun watching that. So the game seems to be fun. I have yet to play it because I've been playing a lot of something else. But the game seems pretty good. It's getting good feedback. The devs are pretty much in tune. And then you have this roller block where they have to push stuff back, man. It kind of sucks. I know Bobby and Jacques, both other hosts as well on the show, have really enjoyed Multiverses. And I know people are playing it on Twitch. So that's who you want to be playing your game, especially because that's going to influence a bunch of, uh, of their followers, other gamers to also start downloading and playing this, this game. And what I'm hearing, like you were saying, even for a free to play game, it's good. And it sounds like they could have even maybe gotten away with charging for it. But the key was that it's free to play. Cause then everyone can give it a shot. And then when they do, turns out it, there's a pretty decent game behind it. Yeah. And, and that's the thing. It's like, it's a, a double edged sword sword when you have streamers playing your shit. Because streamers play nonstop, eight to nine to ten hours a day, and if there's not enough content there, they're going to get burned out, and they're going to go back to whatever the fuck they were playing before they started playing multiverses, and then they're going to say, "Oh, multiverses is dead. No one's streaming it. No one cares about it." And then that gets into the psyche of the people that watch yeah. streams, and then they stop playing the game. So that's honestly, you, you almost don't want streamers to play your shit. <laughs> like you want to get the pu- the publicity from it, but you don't want them to be the 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 masses that's pushing people to play game money on the game. Because as soon as they drop the game, the people that watch them drop the game. I will be trying out multiverses at some point. I actually, got a little bit of Red Dead gaming in, and we'll talk about that in the Brokep block. But again, it is available now on multiple platforms, cross play. You can play it with your friends, and we do have some Disney news this week as their upcoming Haunted Mansion reboot has added two more A-listers to its cast. Entertainment Weekly confirmed that both, and you and I are a fan of him, Jared Leto and Jamie Lee Curtis have joined the cast of this remake. So they are joining the likes of Rosario Dawson, Lakeith Stanfield, Owen Wilson, Danny DeVito, and Tiffany Haddish. EW reports that Leto will play the Hatbox Ghost while Curtis is going to play Madame Leota, 
Right now, it's set to release next year on March 10th, and that's a huge get. They're spending a lot of money on this Haunted Mansion remake or live-action film. Yeah, and I'm, I like the cast. This is like a really good cast when it comes to, you got a lot of comedy here with Owen Wilson, Danny DeVito, Tiffy, Tiffany Haddish, pretty much every movie she's in, she's hilarious. Keith Stanfield, although he does do a lot of a really good job at comedy roles, such as Atlanta, he's just a good actor in general. You add Jared Leto, I'm sure he's going to probably play something with some type of dry humor to it. And then Jamie Lee Curtis, she she's she can be goofy sometimes when yeah. <laughs> would need to be. So this cast is really crazy. Like that's a lot of money. And is this only supposed to be like a Disney Plus movie, or is this gonna be in the theaters? It better be in theaters because, uh, you, like you said, it's an expensive movie. And as we know now, especially post COVID, we was a little unsure when we were doing the shutdowns and everything of whether theaters are still going to be the money maker or if streamers. Streaming services are going to be it, and it's proven now, especially with after Top Gun. A lot of people said Top Gun Maverick saved the movie industry for cinema, for theatrical <laughs> releases. We know that people are willing to drop a billion dollars worldwide on a movie. So right now, I think the plan is similar to David Zaslav's, which will go on, of put it out in theaters, then put it, put it out on your streaming service. So that's what it sounds like it's going to be. And honestly, I, I, I like the cast, but up until they put Jared Leto in there, I wasn't going to see it. Now with him in there, yeah, let's fucking go. I, I'm not even lying. I didn't even know about this until I read it in the so, show notes and then I looked it up and I was like, oh, okay, uh, I'm down to watch it. If it comes in theaters, cool. If it's on Disney Plus, I'll probably end, never end up watching it because yeah. I don't have Disney Plus and I have <laughs> zero inkling, zero feeling, zero want or desire to get on Disney Plus. So hopefully it goes to theaters so I can check it out or at least rent it. <laughs> Same here. And speaking of Disney Plus, she-Hulk attorney at law director Kat Kioro recently broke silence on the criticism that was going on for the show's CGI. Have you seen the CGI? I have. I have. I have. And I don't agree with anything she said. <laughs> <laughs> it's fucking awful. So here's what she said, quote, in terms of the CGI being critiqued, I think that has to do with our culture's belief in its ownership of women's bodies. I think a lot of the critique comes from feeling like they're able to tear apart the CGI woman. There's a lot of talk about her body type, and we based it on Olympian athletes and not bodybuilders. But I think if we had gone the other way, we would be facing the same critique. I think it's very hard to win when you make women's bodies, end quote. Now, I do agree that she would have faced, they would have faced critique as well, but I think that's because the MCU's CGI overall is shitty not just in she hulk i've I've made fun of all the cgi in these fucking movies it's it's terrible and the pr from the people that worked on these movies and shows is also awful because they're talking about how overworked they are and how they get zero time from disney yeah like maybe i'm just not in the the marvel sphere on twitter or on social media in general because most of the cgi critiques i've seen has not been about the bodies. Mm-hmm. It's been about the movement and a lot about her face. Yep. In it. Because I guess like that, her face is CGI, right? It's not yeah. like they don't just put makeup on it and no. kind of spruce it up. It's just straight up CGI. So most of the goofy looking stuff that I've seen with shitty CGI has mostly been her face and then also like the movement of the characters, which I've had a problem with since I watch black panther like the cgi in that shit was fucking terrible absolutely awful so it, it's just not it it's it's so much more i would say video gamey than it doesn't give me a superhero feel it gives me like a video game feel of how the characters are almost like weightless and they have like ridiculous speed when they shouldn't like guys leap off the screen like so quickly and it's like i didn't know this guy was flash i thought he was just really <laughs> strong <laughs> but they have like this ridiculous amount of speed and it just looks unnatural. And then when they don't do the CGI and it's just hand to hand combat besides Captain America 2, it looks terrible. And it's almost as if they they only know how to do fight scenes with CGI. So and that's this one whole of- thing about the, the bodybuilding athletes and shit like that, that's you're going to get that critique without CGI. They, we've seen that critique on Wonder Woman. Right, that's so, true. <laughs> like that that doesn't even make sense. What about the critique of just, hey, you look goofy. They make your character look bad. 
your face looks insane. The lip sync looks off. What about that? And that's the thing that as soon as she brought out that argument of it's sexism, it has to do with with men looking at this woman's body and critiquing it. That's when she lost based on the fact that that's this isn't the only show that's been getting critiqued. And like you said, no one's talking about her her breast size or whatever. Like they're not going into sexualizing the character. They're talking about the quality of CGI in the show. Mark Ruffalo looks fucking terrible in that. I saw GIFs in the mm-hmm. little commercial. He looks as bad as he looked in the other movies from what I saw. And it's just a, a problem overall with Marvel Studios. And they don't give a shit because pay them as little as possible. All these people are going to come out and stream and watch this shit anyway. And that's the thing. It's like, I just don't like how they do it. The, the thing with Disney is like, it's not, it's for, for whatever reason, it's just Marvel that's like this. Like the Mandalorian, from what I've seen, for the most part, they try to do everything without CGI. And when they do have CGI sections, it doesn't look nearly as bad as half of these Marvel shows. And it's really bad with the shows. It almost reminds me of the, the copium that Dragon Ball super fans give when they're like, oh, the animation looks bad. But they're like, but they have to come out with an episode every week. And it's like, not marvel they're doing this shit months in advance they got these guys working to the bone to get these episodes out to the point where they have to push the fucking show back but it's not like they're dr- fucking drawing this shit you know, in like the same week like this shit has been filmed forever but they're they're just trying to do as best they can with the time crunch that they're working on and i've even seen where they've gone back on old episodes and cleaned shit up to make it look at least a little bit better for the people that aren't watching week to week. That's how bad it is. They have people go and basically do patches to the fucking <laughs> episode. It's insane. Like it's a fucking video game. Exactly. I'm glad you brought up that. Cause I hadn't thought about that. It's not, it is just seems to be a problem with the Marvel shows. Cause you don't see these CGI companies complain about Mandalorian, Star Wars, some of their other properties. It seems to be specifically whatever Marvel Studios uses, however they handle contracts with special effects companies, it's only that it, the behavior is only with that company, with the, with Marvel Studios. Their time crunches, the, oh, I, we changed, that's another big one. They change their minds so much where these CGI guys are like, we're changing the same fucking scene three different times because they're, they're still writing the script sometimes. So it, it's, <laughs> it's Kevin Feige and all of his people, I think. Yeah, and and you can't speak up. You can't. You really can't say shit because they they do so much CG work in all of their fucking shows and movies that you might not get work for a while if you don't fucking deal with them because they they're putting out like four or five shows a year on Disney Plus. They got like three fucking movies coming out a year, so it's like if if people they pretty much go into every goddamn cgi company if you if you're if you're a company that's like yeah man you're not gonna work us to the bone you might not see a check for five six seven months Mm -hmm. so you kind of just have to shut up and take it and then maybe do a little anonymous source here oh this guy is doing some off the record talking here to the new york times hey man they're fucking killing us dude like we're working 90 hour work weeks to put out these shows just for the fucking director to be like, ha ha CG is bad, huh? <laughs> right. Fucking Taika Waititi. <laughs> like, come what on. a piece of shit. Yeah. Jesus, bro. Nobody, you think the CGI guy can say, man, this was poorly directed. This was poorly framed. <laughs> nope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> what a circus, man. Well, something that seems to be finally, coming into order. And this was the biggest news story. And I keep hearing it on other podcasts. And of course it broke like a day or two after millennial Mike and I recorded, but it's still been in the Twitter sphere and in conversations and in articles, it's getting a lot of clicks is this Batgirl movie that apparently everyone in the world suddenly cares about Batgirl, (laughs) which was the first of the DC films that were set to premiere on HBO max. This was a decision by the old regime by Toby Emmerich, Walter Hamada has been shelved along with Scoob Holiday Haunt, which was the sequel to the first Scoob that came out there in the pandemic. And that was reported later that day. So both of those got shelved and it's only the first of many projects here. But Batgirl in particular, so this is where the incompetence of the old regime really shines. 
because they got a budget of $90 million. It was originally 70. It ballooned up to 90. It's suspected that it's over a hundred, but during the, because it shot during COVID, that's why it kept going up in, in its budget and its costs. So the New York Post cites that poor test audience reactions were the reason why Zaslav cut the project. So they did get some of that money back. According to Variety, the canceled release will take a $20 million tax write down as it was seen internally by Warner Brothers Discovery as the most financially way sound way to recoup some of the costs. Before we go into what <laughs> Kevin Smith thought about all this and and what some of the real reasons why maybe this got canceled, $90 million, you're ta- you're, so you're losing a $70 million on this project right now by canceling it, Maceo. The, and some people have argued that, well, if they released it, they could have made more than that. They wouldn't have lost $70 million. Good move, bad move. What's going on here? So I, I do want to say like it, it, it's still technically they still lost 90 mil. Like I know they're doing the 20 million tax right now, but that's just them saying like, oh, we lost 20 million dollars. So you can't tax us on that. So that's what they're like, kind of like the, what the write down is. So it, technically they still lost 90 million dollars, but it's the potential of more money they would have lost because they still have to promote the fucking mm-hmm. thing. They can't just put out the fucking movie on HBO and just be like, oh, yeah, there's a movie on there. No, they still have to, if they want the movie to be any type of successful and get any money back, they still have to probably spend $100 million on on marketing and promoting the movie. So to me, if they felt like this shit wasn't going to make money back, this, the Scoob Holiday Haunt, which has tons of, that that costs tons of money, the voice acting alone, the, the people that voice the characters, and the, the Scoob, that's the one that's all CG, right? Like all animated. Yeah, according to Paul Dini, who wrote this movie, it was supposedly 95% done. Yeah, it, it, it sucks. It sucks. But listen, man, like the 90 million in the hole, then another 100 million to promote. And it's only on HBO Max. Like it doesn't add up. And as much as I like, I don't know if the movie is going to be good, but I do like the actress. I like her attitude about it. And she was really good from what I can tell in the. The Miranda, what's the dude name? The guy that made uh, Hamilton. From what I can tell, she she could sing for sure. Luis uh, Manuel Miranda or something yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. So she she seems like she's pretty pretty good at singing, and her acting is decent from what I've seen. But she had a pretty good attitude about it. So it sucks that you know she she doesn't get to be Batgirl. But it's like, listen, man, Hamada and the rest of those Jokers, they fucked up. They fucked up. Why Why did they spend so much on this? And this is the hubris of fucking a- Warner Brothers at the time. This movie costs more than the fucking Joker. <laughs> <laughs> it costs more than the fucking Joker. They didn't even want to put that shit out low key. <laughs> yep. They were trying their best. They didn't. They, oh, man, you want man. We're not, you can you can even have the profit. We don't even want the profit because this, <laughs> this bullshit isn't going to make money. No one's going to want to watch this in a billion dollars later. Like, come on, man. They they were fucking up. And this whole time that they DC has practically been dormant, the stuff that actually makes money, Shazam, Aquaman, Batman, like they they've been quiet. Of course, Joker, it that went out to 2024, man. <laughs> like, what are they doing? What was what was these guys doing? We still haven't gotten a flash movie. Aquaman 2, they just started filming that shit. Like They've been pushing stuff back and back and back, and they were spending ninety to a hundred million dollars on this bad girl thing that couldn't even get past the testing audience phase on HBO Max fucking projects. Ninety million, yeah. not something that's coming out in theaters either. It's like they they were. It's like they thought they had infinite money and they were like, "Fuck it, let's just spend it all." Because chances are, maybe we'll get fired, but might as well. I don't know what the fuck. Who the hell thought it was a good idea to spend ninety million dollars on a bad girl movie that's exclusive to HBO Max? To spend what was it seventy million on the Wonder Twins movie that David said no fuck that we're not making that it's insane how much yeah. they thought that they could spend on these fucking projects and and it turns out it apparently it wasn't very good and I like it was almost as if like the people under Hamada and what was going on with Warner Brothers at the time it was almost as if they were looking at what Netflix was doing where they just spend billions of dollars on content. And they were like, we have to do that too. And it's like, no, you don't, especially not on HBO. HBO is known for quality. 
Mm-hmm. That's what the whole purpose of it is. Damn near, they have the best streaming service in regards to content because everything that comes out on there, even if it doesn't get renewed, usually is at, at least above, slightly above average. And a yeah. lot of it is just inc- either good to incredible. So you're trying to put these shitty movies that don't even get capture test audience and i don't even really like the whole test audience vibe sure because i don't like making movies to get to the oh the average movie goer because the average movie goer likes garbage like mm-hmm. fucking marvel movies yeah so I, I don't really pay attention to the test audience like that but they're trying to get their money back the shit to fucking match the average everyday movie goer but they're not even going to the movies to see the, the goddamn thing anyway right it's shit show and there's a couple of reasons why there are some theories on the test audience wasn't the real reason. Cause apparently black Adam tested the same as the Batgirl movie and they're not canceling black Adam. So obviously it comes down to money, $90 million. It's not coming out in the theaters. That's a big part of it. But the biggest rumor now, and we're going to find out in two months, according to sell up link, which we'll talk about later too, is David does want to restore the Snyderverse and this Batgirl movie. I don't know mm. if you know the details about it, but this is a post flash project. It was supposed to be where the flash merges Michael Keaton's universe with Zack Snyder's universe, erases Batman, erases Superman, Henry Cavill and Ben Affleck. Michael Keaton is the Batman of this universe and Batgirl and Supergirl are the Batman and Superman's of this universe. They're going to be the main focus. So it was going to be a female and diverse justice league. That was going to be your justice league in this movie. Snyder's Gordon is now retroactively throughout history, Michael Keaton's Gordon. So they would Mm. have always worked together. And if David wants to restore the Snyderverse, this movie does not work at all. Even if you refilm it with Ben Affleck as Batman, there's things in this movie that do not fit at all into those, into that 10 year plan that David has. So that's the biggest rumor is this would not have fit and it would have ruined the plans of let's restore the Snyderverse because this movie does not fit in there. And that's the biggest rumor now with the Flash and Black Adam coming and Aquaman 2 that those are being now reshot and repurposed so that they do fit into Zack Snyder's Justice League. And, and that that whole plan that they had with Supergirl girl and Batgirl being the Batman and Superman of the DC and the Justice League, just listening to that is the dumbest shit I've ever heard in my entire life. Zero money. Like, you're... You're saying Batman is the, the literally the face of DC. You put a Batman movie out, it's at the lowest. <laughs> well, I was gonna say a lowest is five hundred million, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> but in normal cases, it, the lowest it can make is five hundred million dollars. Superman probably is a billion dollar movie as long as you make a decent one. Superman and Batman, that's like one of the first things. Fuck the Marvel movies. If you say something like superhero, you might fucking think Superman, Superman, Batman, and then maybe next Spider-Man. That's what you hear. Like, that's what you visualize nine times out of ten. If someone said superhero and they weren't going to put out any fucking Superman movies or bat. Well, I guess they would have continued with the bat, the Batman universe that they got going on. Maybe <laughs> we'll see what Zazzle does with that. Yeah, I can't believe <laughs> <laughs> Like, the, uh, Batgirl and Supergirl being the face of DC, like, you know, as much as I like diversity and shit like that, like, that's not going to work, man. That doesn't print money. You no. need shit that prints money. They could be a Justice League. They can have their own movies, but they can't be the face of the fucking franchise. And as much as, you know, you got your you got Jason Momoa playing Aquaman and you got The Rock playing Black Adam. They can't be the face. Black Adam and Aquaman can't be the face of DC either. You need Superman, you need Batman in there. As much as we, as much as people like to hate and say, oh man, another Batman movie, another Superman movie, it fucking prints money. And people come out and watch those movies and, and they will once Zaslav gets the Trinity back up on the big screen. On Hollywood Babylon, Kevin Smith shared his take on the news. He said, quote, it's an incredibly bad look to cancel the Latina Batgirl movie. I don't give a shit if the movie was absolute fucking dog shit, man. And I guarantee you that it wasn't. (laughs) The two directors who directed that movie 
did a couple of episodes of Miss Marvel, and that was a wonderful fucking show, you know, end quote. <laughs> Kevin knows a lot about releasing dog shit movies, uh, man. Oh my God. Kevin, Kevin Smith, this guy, just, just bad take after bad take. It's an incredible bad look to cancel the Latina Batgirl movie. Like, what? Because they canceled Batgirl and the character happens to be Latina, that's just going to somehow make it like people are going to be like, oh, I was going to watch a DC, a DC movie, but they canceled the Latina Batgirl movie. Like, no one, no one's paying attention to that shit. The average moviegoer doesn't even know no. this shit exists. They don't even know that this was a thing. They probably don't read Twitter. They don't know. So it's not a, it's only a bad look to the 10% of people that talk about this shit and are in the discourse of, oh, I'm on Twitter, I'm on, uh, I'm on social media and I'm on Reddit furious that they canceled this movie. I'm shaking. <laughs> like, come on, Kevin, like you gotta stop, bro. It's not that serious. They canceled the movie. It sucks for the people that worked on it, that they're never going to get the credit. And that's why I, I kind of feel for them. Because we, we had the exact same feeling about Zack Snyder with his Justice League. A lot of those people didn't get to be on T. They didn't get to be on screen. They didn't get to get their credit. They got cut out the movie. They All those people ended up getting their just due when the Zack Snyder Justice League released. So that's why I feel bad for him that the movie didn't get released. But it's got to make money. At the end of the day, it has to make money. And before, because I know someone might bring up the, and I've seen it, the comparison of well, you guys were fighting to get the Snyder Cut released. How come we can't fight to get the Batgirl released? The circumstances are completely different on these two projects. Batgirl is not being canceled over, well, we're going to bring in this other director who's going to abuse the cast members, who's going to lock a woman, Gal Gadot, in her trailer until she comes mm -hmm. out and films these scenes, who, Jeff Johns, who wrote in some some racist takes on, on Cyborg and some of these other characters, cut out the other minority characters in there like the atom and and cut down the cyborg scenes quite a bit and took out a lot of the heart of that movie and it's like this isn't the same thing these are not the same circumstances so and also the background movie since it is getting a write down tax wise it's illegal for them to ever release the background movie so anyone that's mm -hmm. fighting for it to come out later on on hbo max it's not going to happen because that's tax fraud so no on all of that immediately yeah but this whole, you, you, you nailed it when you said 10% of people care about this. All these comic writers on DC, I don't know if you know about this, but on Twitter and on podcasts, comic writers and comic artists are all on the same side of this is terrible that they're taking away a female centric movie from the audiences. The rumor is that they're all afraid of their, for their work, for their jobs, because Zaslav is coming after all of that shit next. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> he, he, he's going to cut all that. The, and the, here's the thing about that is that you, who like if we're gonna blame shit, you gotta blame Hamada, you gotta yes. blame Josh, you gotta almost blame Josh Whedon. as one more other person. But like we were supposed to get the Batgirl movie, we were supposed to get Birds of Prey, we were supposed to get like a Harley Quinn uh, solo movie, right? Gotham like, City Sirens, all yeah. of these, Gotham City Sirens, like all of that shit didn't happen, and that was all during that time where Zack Snyder was out. Mm -hmm. And they were just going crazy. And all of those things got canceled. Some of them because Josh Whedon was a piece of shit. <laughs> and some of them because they spent exorbitant amounts of money. And there's there's more cuts. There's Blue Beetle. <laughs> there's more shit. They can, the Wonder Twins. Like They got more shit that they can axe from whatever garbage that they were trying to just throw shit at the wall. Like Just because Marvel's making Doctor Strange and they somehow can make some money off that shit doesn't mean that you could just throw whatever characters you want mm -hmm. up on the fucking screen and spend millions of dollars. Like you got to start low. Man. Like <laughs> it doesn't have to be CW CGI low, but it, it has to start at a lower level. And Zaslav, like you said, he's just cleaning up the mess from these other executives. That's all that this is. And he is now setting things right, um, I'm hoping. And that's what it sounds like is happening. And like you were saying, 10% of people give a shit about this. Zaslav is aiming for the general audience. He wants that Top Gun Maverick audience, the general audience to come out for these movies again, because they're not coming out for thus the pedal squad from James Gunn. 
They're they're probably not going to come out for Black Adam as much as David tries to fix it. I don't think that movie's going to hit a billion dollars or anything like that. But that's who he wants. He wants the people that didn't know about any Batgirl project, don't give a shit about a Batgirl project, but that are going to come out for a Superman, a Wonder Woman, or a Batman film. And my my thing that's crazy about it is like the fact that he actually went through this merger knowing that there's so much shit that he has to fucking just get rid of and lose money on and that this is this whole merger isn't even going to be profitable for at least another year to two because he has to basically lose out on hundreds of millions of dollars due to the fuck ups of the people that own the company before he merged it. The balls on fucking Zaslav too. I love the the quotes. He's like, no, fuck this. We're going to remove that. And I, and he, and anyone that is now on Twitter calling him a racist and a Trump supporter and all this other stuff. It, that's a, a similar argument to what this she hulk stuff happened of like there's no good reason for you to, to there's no argument there on your side so immediately okay well he must be racist because he's counting all of these things and honestly i don't think david gives a shit i, I think he knew all no. of that was going to come anyway and he's like it doesn't matter i'm here to make money yeah at the end of the day like he might get a little bit of bra- bad press here and there but in a grand scheme of things if he turns this shit around and makes money and they see the the growth in the future of the the merger going up then the shareholders that's what the fuck he cares about the shareholders like he he, and they're making it a political thing he's on i'm sure whatever politics he has is on the side of that's that's going to get warner brothers discovery the most money it doesn't matter and whether it's biden trump none of that shit fucking matters it's what prints money the last thing i'll say about this back girl bit is i've been seeing Put her, because she lost out on the on the movie and they feel bad about it. I forgot the actress's name, but put her in Zack's Deathstroke Batman movie. Put it in that one, in Ben Affleck's one, because Batgirl was cast in that one. They were going to have that character fighting alongside Batman against Deathstroke. And they said that, that could be a way to make it up. And it's like immediately on Twitter, the perfect response of, why does Zack have to give up his casting of Anna Hendrick, I believe was who he had cast. Just so that she can, this other Batgirl can take her role. It's like no one thinks of the other side of these things either. He had a casting already, yeah. so why should he have to give that up? It just doesn't yeah, make sense. To me, to it wouldn't make sense. It, it To me, it also doesn't make sense, especially because he usually casts very well for his movies. And you can't even spin it into a, oh, like a minority diversity type deal. Because he is very good at diversifying mm-hmm. the cast in every movie he does. So... Yeah, just watch any of his fucking films. That'll tell you everything. DC yeah. Films Check president. out Rebel Moon. Yeah, exactly. DC Films president Walter Hamada is reportedly on the brink of exiting the studio following the decision to shelve the Batgirl movie that was coming to HBO Max. So according to The Hollywood Reporter, Hamada will stay in his post through late October when The Rock's Black Adam hits theaters. And according to Geekosity... Hamada had plans for a DC crossover Crisis on Infinite Earths event that Zaslav has now canceled. Zaslav supposedly still wants to do a Crisis crossover event, but not until much further down the line of his 10-year DC plan, which if you're canceling all these different projects, of course, they're not going to do that crossover event that he wants. Then supposedly Ray Fisher, actually, Cyborg himself, went on Twitter and he's like, it's funny that Hamada is trying to spin this as well i'm exiting and it's my decision and he ray was like no you're being replaced dude (laughs) (laughs) yeah man like the plans are just didn't add up you're trying to do a crisis crossover event you don't have the films bro like Mm -hmm. it's been so long since we gotten these mainline films like if you don't count there's justice league right we're going way back to what 2020 right for wonder woman 1984 that's 2020 yeah i believe so yeah so we haven't had shit since then the flash is supposed to supposed to come out at the end of this year no that's next year now (laughs) or oh oh, yeah it got pushed into next year so there's black adam is this year yeah black adam is this year but you got a two-year gap then before 1984, we've had uh, had anything with like Aquaman. I'm sure he was supposed to be a big deal in this crisis event. So like they're trying to do these huge things that's supposed to bring people to the theaters. And no, they're not showing up for this, bro. 
<laughs> they're not showing up for this, especially when you got characters that's only sh- that's not showing up on the theaters right. into these movies. Like you got Batgirl that's only going to be on HBO Max, and you're going to tr- take her when again, like it's HBO Max. That's a streaming service. It's not even on HBO. It's on HBO Max. Mm-hmm. A, a lot of people still don't have HBO Max. No, so you're th- expecting those people to show to show up to the theater to see her see Batgirl in a crisis event, crisis crossover event. Like that's not happening. No. And that was one of the problems that Jason Kyler was saying that most people that had HBO weren't converting to HBO max because they didn't know how, or they didn't want to, they didn't know that they got more value for the same price for just converting over. And I'm assuming that's something Zaslav is going to try to fix when he does his merger app next, next summer is when that Warner brothers discovery app merger is going to happen so let's see if he can do it a little bit better than jason kyler when it's simply hbo to hbo max couldn't pull it off so let's see what happens on that end but we do have a (laughs) so walter mott is gone i can't wait to see who becomes the new president of dc films he has not announced it yet i think in october when hamada leaves that dc president i think is going to confirm that the snyderverse is back and i think that's why he's holding off on telling us this 10-year plan and and that's something that I don't know if you agree with this, but let's he's doing all these cancellations, which we've still got more to cover on the cancels. But let's say like Scott was bringing up on Discord, and I get it, but look at it this way: he's like they're canceling all these projects, but he's not announcing anything in his ten year plan. And I thought about that, and it's hmm. like, well, if you cancel all these projects, and then David goes, and here's my ten year plan, people are immediately that want the few people that wanted to hate this or that wanted these projects are going to immediately hate and resent those new movies and projects because they'll see that as the stuff that canceled all of these older projects. It'll immediately have bad press of, here's what we're getting instead. This is why Batgirl is canceled. This is why Supergirl is canceled because of Justice League 2, because of the Batman, Ben Affleck solo film, because of Man of Steel 2. And and my theory, I'm assuming, and he's a smarter guy than I am, Zaslif, but I'm guessing he's holding off until later so that it doesn't get the heat of, this is why they were canceled because of these movies. Yeah. And, and the whole, like the plan and the phases and stuff like that Marvel does when they go out to the comic con stage and they say, Oh, these are the phases. These are the movies that's coming out. It's to me, it's better for Zazzle to just hold off. And if he has to announce them during like an investor call, mm-hmm. those kind of things do it like that. You don't need to press put out to the press. This is our 10 year plan. Cause it doesn't benefit you. Half the time, these things get moved around, pushed back, pushed forward, or even canceled. That's true. So there's no point to put out a full 10-year plan. Five years, okay. But in the grand scheme of things, it's th- those types of plans are really should be only for the investors to know, oh, I need to put, I need to buy more shares. I need to do this. I need to do that because I feel like the company is going in, in this type of direction. It's not for the fans because the fans aren't going to remember Oh, 10 years down the line, we're getting the Justice League 3. Mm. Like, they're not going to remember. They're not going to care. They're, they're only going to care once they see the advertisements, once they see the trailers. So it, it doesn't behest him to say shit. Just do your cancels. If you have to say something during an investor call, the investors call and say, hey, what the fuck is the plan with DC? You haven't announced anything. And the only things that's coming out are the shit that we already had in plan. Like that was already in play before you even purchased and merged and you became the president. Just keep it under the wraps because as much as he keeps canceling, and I like that he keeps doing it all in one go. Just, yes. I feel like he if he if there's more cancellations, he needs to just put it out now. Absolutely. And speaking of cancellations, what the next one here was Variety, which confirmed that Strange Adventures, which was an anthology series originally developed for HBO Max, probably cost a shit ton of money by Greg Berlanti, who set up the Arrowverse and all the CW DC shows, has now been canceled. This comes after director Kevin Smith indicated that the series was canceled during his Hollywood Babylon podcast, same one that he talked about Batgirl and how it shouldn't have been canceled. He was brought on to develop a standalone episode of the series. So we know why Kevin's upset about these cancellations. Uh, (laughs) That tells uh, it all right. Circle. That's right. (laughs) So what was Strange Adventures? It was supposed to be set in the DC universe, a bunch of anthology one hour episodes that featured characters from all across its canon, one hour drama that would have explored 
close-ended stories about the different lives and or of ordinary humans and superheroes. It, it, it sounds very vague. It sounds like they were letting the old regime was letting the writers, hey, just make whatever show you want, tell whatever story you want. You have an hour, put it out on this show. The problem with this, and this is why it conflicts with Zaslav's thing, is during the investor call, he was talking about IP protection and how they need to focus on quality. You can't have a show like this out there where Kevin Smith is free to do an episode of Bizarro talking about his boner, because I'm sure that would have been in there, or, or fucking James Gunn now with fucking Peacemaker. He's done enough damage to the DC yeah. brand as it is. And Zaslav doesn't want that shit. He's all about IP protection, according to his calls with the investors. So something like this won't fly. He wants to keep it very controlled, and this is incredibly loose. Yeah, and the the concept I don't have a problem with. It's an interesting concept that I, I would probably enjoy, but I don't like how they had different writers and different directors. If it was more or less something like American Horror Story, that would be interesting, where it's like it has a set type of flow to it, and a set kind of like it's for the most part the same directors or at least the same showrunner you can't have all of these different variables and then you got guys like kevin smith coming in doing episodes doing doing like basically guest appearance directing episodes like his type of like let's say I, I, you got someone like me or someone like like Zack snyder doing like a nice serious drama filled heavy story and then the next episode, because it's HBO Max, like you just click play on the next and you got Kevin Smith with dick jokes <laughs> <laughs> and bombs and all that. So, yeah. Like, it, and you know, he would have fucking made an appearance in that shit. Of course. Of course. <laughs> so it's an interesting concept. I wouldn't mind it if it wasn't. Uh, to me, it, it sounds like something that would have been a better concept without DC properties. Just you know, a regular anthology series. That's good for HBO Max. I wouldn't mind that. It wouldn't have to be DC. But it, it it's an interesting concept for sure. I think that could be something that they go back to, they circle back around to, if they can just get one director and have like an overarching story to it, but the segmented episodes don't tie in as well up, and up until you get closer to the end or something like that. Plus you also risk ruining a character for future use. Because yeah. someone's first exposure to uh, maybe the question in years that we haven't seen, like maybe in Birds of Prey or Bizarro, that's going to be the perception of that character to the general audience. And if they want to use that character in the on the big screen, that kind of ruins it a little bit. Not, not that audiences would get confused as to what a multiverse is, but it's it comes back to that brand protection. Someone pointed out at work, let's say that Batgirl movie flopped, which it probably would have. Look at Catwoman. When that flopped, that ruined that character for years. They wouldn't use, yeah. they wouldn't touch Catwoman again until The Dark Knight Rises. Yeah, man, and, and that's very much true. That's that's definitely a, a problem when you think about it. Like, you throw in, like, I don't know, like, Brainiac or something <laughs> in an episode, and, and that shit doesn't hit right, or they make him look kind of goofy. Like, if Kevin Smith made him look kind of goofy... Mm -hmm. And you wouldn't want to see him in a Superman movie for years. Like, you really would just be like, oh, man. Oh. Or if that character, if it's like a really serious episode or what have you, and it's well acted, then people are going to be like, oh, man. Like, in the future, if they throw him in a movie, oh, they should have gotten him. Yep. <laughs> Why didn't they get him? Why didn't they get her to play the character? And it's like... Cause that's not who I wanted to cast it, man. Like, <laughs> so I mean, that's, that's the, the double edged sword there. So I, the only thing I could think of, it would have had to have been like characters that for sure wouldn't ever hit this big screen. But e either way, like I could, I could see that getting axed, especially if they weren't deep into like the pre-production or the production phase of it. Oh, hell yeah. Just ax that off rip and you can save some money. Someone on Twitter was pointing out, but David Zaslav and Greg Berlanti are great friends. And another immediately said, it's fucking show business. It's not show friends, you know, like <laughs> this, is, it, this isn't how this shit works. He's not going to say, well, go ahead and make your show because we're friends. That's not how David operates. And that's nope. clear right now. Nope. That, that, that shit does not matter, man. Because he could easily say, hey, bro, we're canceling this, but I got you something else on the back end. Like, <laughs> like come up, hit me with a better idea. And I'll oh, green like that. No problem. Like, if that's his homie like that, they're really friends like that. 
man, I, I'm canceling this, but I know I can get you on something else. Hmm. No, no big deal. No one cares. I, I'm sure he probably went out for drinks with them after the shit got canceled. Probably. <laughs> Another cancellation. Rolling Stones report. Rolling Stone. I did the fucking thing that they were doing on Twitter. <laughs> Rolling Stone, <laughs> not the band. Reports that Supergirl is not moving forward with production as part of David Zaslav's shifts. So this Supergirl movie would have spun out of The Flash, which is supposedly right now in limbo. And Zaslav said, quote, We're not going to release any film before it's ready. We're not going to release a film to make a quarter. The focus is going to be, how do we make each of these films in general as good as possible? But DC is something that we think we could make better and we're focused on it now. We're not going to put out a movie out unless we believe in it. That's it. The objective is to grow the DC brand, to grow the DC characters, but also our job is to protect the DC brand. And that's what we're going to do. End quote. He did go on to confirm that Black Adam, Shazam 2, and The Flash will still be releasing. So those so far are not getting canceled. And I'm, I'm, I'm cool with that. I'm cool with that. I, I still feel like it's been so long for Shazam 2. It's been so long for The Flash and with whatever the fuck Ezra Miller got, has going on. Like that guy just can't stay out of the headlines for doing dumb shit. You got those two. He's like, eh, I don't know that the, the general public is going to be super hyped to go see Shazam 2. Maybe if you throw The Rock in that too, if Black Adam does well, you throw The Rock in Shazam 2 and then you got star power there, but this Supergirl movie just, hey man, it's it's not even in, it's not even in production. So mm. just go ahead, ax it there, pay whatever you have to pay for the people that worked on it so far, and kill it. Because if you have a set plan, you're saying you want quality, and we don't know what Zaslav's quality is. He might he might be the Mister Quippy Marvel movie guy. Sure, for all we know, and we're we're going with the assumption or. I, I'm not going to say we because I don't, I, I'm not a restore the Snyderverse guy, <laughs> but you know, all you, the, this restore the Snyderverse guys thinking that Zach is coming back or at least he's more into the quality, serious type DC films that we've gotten in the past. So if we, if you're thinking that in these, these movies that's been greenlit so far, isn't of that quality, isn't of that ilk, isn't of that writing style then just go ahead and ax them now and get get DC focused. It, it should be printing money. DC should be printing money, and it's not, unfortunately. And with these films, Black Adam, Shazam 2, The Flash, David said that he's seen them and that he likes them, but that they can make them better. So there's a speculation that they're going mm. to go in and, and refilm some things. And that may delay some of these. I don't know. We'll We'll find out. But supposedly already this week, the Black Adam post credit scene got changed and people speculate mm. that that's Henry Cavill Superman in the black and silver suit. That's the rumor is what got added. And that's, what's going to be seen in October. And that's, what's going to confirm that the Snyderverse is returning. So this is an article that Zach liked on Vero when, when they tagged them in it two days ago on the future of the DC brand, D Zaslav confirmed on the earnings call that he's going to be following a long-term plan, which is different than what they were doing before with Hamada and all them, they were just kind of going off every couple of years, they would announce something. He said, quote, you look at Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman, Aquaman, these are brands that are known everywhere in the world. And the ability to drive those all over the world with great story is a big opportunity for us. We have done a reset. We've restructured the business. We're going to focus where there will be a team with a 10 year plan focusing just on DC. It's very similar to the structure that Alan Horn and Bob Iger put together very effectively with Kevin Feige at Disney. We think that we could build a long-term, much stronger, sustainable growth business out of DC. And as part of that, we're going to focus on quality. End quote. So that's where they were talking about, they tagged Zach in this on Vero and they put on their good times ahead and he liked it. So this is where people immediately were like, it's happening. It, it's confirmed. <laughs> like he just gave it away. <laughs> ah. It, it, but here's the thing, though, with Zach, right? Do you think that he's going to go back to the original plan that he had, those original ideas, if he does come back and, and the Snyderverse gets restored? No, or he's, he, he's already said that the story has evolved since okay. just, since the original plans of five five films. 
So he's, is, he's been working on it since. Do you think Zaz or, or is the or is DC is Zaslav like the whoever he puts in as the president of DC? Are they going to be meddling through the fucking movies like they did with <laughs> like they were trying to do with Justice League before they just outed him out? And just Time will tell. Right? Just that's the things that I'm kind of like iffy about. Sure, and and that's the thing. I'm I'm assuming that if Zach were to come back he would have that stipulation of, look, I got fucked really hard. And this is how we got into this mess. If we had stayed the course, you would have had your reboot by now. <laughs> and it's and now it's True. a whole fucking mess and it's costing millions of dollars. So I'm assuming that the stipulation is we're going to film my, my Justice League 2 and 3 back to back and then we're going to do all these solo projects in between. So that's the other big thing is people think from Geekosity that Zaslav is going to announce the Batman solo film, Superman and Wonder Woman solo films, and then Justice League 2. And then after that, there's going to be a bunch of solo films again before Justice League 3. And that that's what Zach has had to work into his his plan as well for these 10-year set of movies. And that's, that's something Zaslav has said too. He doesn't want a bunch of projects on HBO Max for DC like they were doing now. He wants to focus on the theatrical experience and then do other things for the streaming service, which is stuff like HGTV and all that. And another thing, like, what what's Zach's deal with like Netflix? Doesn't he have like two more movies besides Rebel Moon that he has to put out in there? So, how's he gonna transfer from doing whatever he's doing with Netflix to switching over back to DC? Right now, Rebel Moon is being filmed, and he's doing those back to back. So one and two are gonna be filmed all together, and then they'll re- Netflix will release it over a couple years or whatever they want to do. He does have that army of the dead verse that he's still attached to. So he's attached to a sequel. He's also attached to direct two episodes of the animated series somewhere in between there too. And, and hopefully Netflix, I don't know if Netflix has even canceled all of those because of all of the subscription trouble that they've been going through. They can't kill the animation department. So I don't even know if Zach still has those projects to be honest with you, but those were the original. Yes. He did have those projects lined up as well. Okay. Well, yeah. I mean, it seems like you got a pretty decent plate working. He's working on right now. So, but I, hey, well, I guess we'll find out in October what, what what's going to happen with that. And Warner Brothers Discovery did confirm that summer 2023 is going to be the service merging window for HBO Max and Discovery Plus. He said, "Quote: Once our subscription video on demand service is firmly established in the market." We see real potential and are exploring the opportunity for a fast or free ad-supported streaming offering that would give consumers who do not want to pay a subscription fee access to great library content, while at the same time serving as an entry point to our premium service, end quote. So there's going to be a tiered service when it comes to the Discovery Plus or the Warner Brothers Discovery streaming service, which we'll start seeing next summer. Yeah, and that's what I like. That's a good way to get growth. I don't I don't know what the numbers are looking like with HBO Max right now, but fourteen ninety nine a month, I know it has quality. It has a lot of quality. But damn, that's a steep price. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's still it's still better than Netflix. Yeah. Fourteen ninety nine damn bare doesn't even get you four K. Like <laughs> like come on, man. We're in twenty twenty two, bro. Like I shouldn't have to pay extra and get four K. It should just be automatic. I could watch four K YouTube right now and pay <laughs> nothing. <laughs> All it, all it, it costs me nothing, and it costs the people that put, upload the videos to just render in 4K. So, but 14.99 is a steep price a month. I, I know Biden just you know announced zero percent inflation or whatever, but like shit costs a lot of money nowadays. Like the gas drop, but groceries still high, <laughs> the utilities are still high. So, paying 14.99 a month is a hard tell. So you can definitely capture a shit ton more people if you have an ad uh, an ad free version that's 14.99 or you throw some ads in like hulu for 7.99 or completely even free you get some content with ads and you gain that ad revenue money and then once they transfer over you can maybe put up something in the middle where you get all the access to everything but you still have ads and you pay $7.99 Seven ninety nine a month, and then the fourteen ninety nine you get no ads, and you watch whatever you want to watch. So that is definitely a better pitch than HBO Max, just fourteen ninety nine. And I don't know if you remember this, but when HBO Max was still in its infancy, 
Kyler, right? Did yeah. Say that right, Kyler. He said that they were coming out with an ad supported version, right. and it never happened. It literally never happened. That was like three years ago, right? Never fucking happened. I think he was trying to save his job because at that point he left like a year ago. He got sent away or whatever. So I'm, I'm guessing he was just trying to get as more subscribers, get happy, get the investors happy. And the stock hasn't been great for AT and T. So that's that's probably why he went and all the money that he was spending and allowing to be spent on these HBO Max projects. He just went too heavy on it. HBO Max is not the future of DC projects. Definitely. You talked about the Joker sequel. It is now looking at an October 4th, 2024 release date. This is according to a new report from Deadline. It's called Joker 2 Folly Ado. First Joker film took in $1.6 billion worldwide with Ooh. Joaquin Phoenix winning Best Actor at the Academy Awards. And it is confirmed officially that Lady Gaga is in the film and playing Harley Quinn. Most of the film is supposed to take place in Arkham Asylum. And they are spending more money on this sequel as opposed to the $20 million. Now they believe it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm sure they're not doing that profit split. <laughs> no, not they're this time. That, <laughs> they're taking that money. This, I don't like it, man. I don't like it. I don't like that it's five years later. <laughs> I, don't, I don't like that it's looking like it's going to be some type of musical. I hate fucking musicals. So I'm, I'm not... As of right now, and up until basically up, up in, I'm not even paying attention to what's going on with this joke or sequel up until I see a trailer and they show me something that's going to make me want to go as much as I like Jared Leto. Walking Phoenix. So I was, well, Jared Leto, Jesus Christ. Well, as much as I like Walking Phoenix and I love the first Joker movie, I'm not, I'm not on board with this at all, man. Like it's just five years. It, I know we have COVID and everything, but damn. <laughs> That's a long ass time to to have a sequel. Supposedly, the director, from what I heard, they they kept asking him like, "Hey, all right, let's do a Joker two, let's do a Joker two. and he kept turning it down, whether it was for more, for more money or something else. But right now, the latest rumor is that he wanted his DC Black films to release like that's that he wanted this series of R rated DC films, low budget to come out and when they didn't Toby Emmerich said no you you're just going to do your Joker movie and that's it that he was waiting for Warner Brothers Discovery to say okay you can you can have your producer credit on these other spin-off films which they've yet to not spin-off but other DC black films that they're releasing that are going to be R rated that they have yet to announce so supposedly that's what I'm hearing is why it's been taking a while yeah i mean at what point i guess it's Joker so like whatever it, it prints money is the Joker. Like, everybody loves the Joker, so it's kind of like uh, it doesn't really matter. Then I guess I would assume that this isn't going to super tie into the first one really at all, and it do it doesn't really have to. It can be its own segmented own thing, but it's still like man, I don't like that it's been so long. But they got I gotta see more. I gotta know more before I'm I'm even paying attention to this. And it's two years away, dude. Like. <laughs> it's, be it's probably better that I forget that it's even coming yeah. out in the future yeah I'm, I'm guessing it got announced early because of the earnings call maybe he mentioned it in there and I said like, well here it is <laughs> I don't know who knows but yeah it is a little while away and by then we will have actually which is kind of nice by 2024 that should be the first year of this set of 10 year plan movies that David will have been fully in control of because these next Black Adam Shazam and Flash is just the the still the the runoff right of of the old yeah. regime so that year where we'll start seeing exactly what he wants to make but a lot of answers will be given in october again is what i'm hearing at the end of october as soon as hamada leaves and you'll hear it right here on the show let's head on over into the 2022 podcast awards because we did get nominated for the sixth year in a row under games and hobbies so a huge thank you to you on the other side who voted who took the time to go into podcastawards.com and vote in once again for the sixth year in a row and we're in that slate and right now voting is happening for 500 randomly selected voters and that make sure to check your spam folder because bobby got one he got chosen to be one of the final slate voters and he's like good thing i checked my spam folder because it went in there 
And so he went in and he voted. And so make sure you check your spam folders because you might have been selected and you can make a difference in voting for us on their games and hobbies. So huge thanks to the Brokehead Core and congratulations to you, Maceo, and to the rest of the co-hosts as well. Hey, man, uh, I promise I only vote. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. I, I, I ain't gonna lie. One year I did forget to fucking vote. But <laughs> five years I voted and I never got the, the next set of voting. That's crazy. I'm like, damn, I can't get it one time. I know. I think Bobby has got it like three. Yes, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> so what? You know, but hey, man, good luck to you, us, everyone. Mm -hmm. um, hopefully we can say two time award. The award ceremony will be on September 29th, which is on International Podcast Day. And they'll do a stream and we'll put up the link and we'll see. We find out when you do. So everyone's got to submit a. A, an acceptance speech video so without knowing if if you won so we'll find out on september 29th and we will remind you in between then but let's head on over into the brocap block which is the more personal side of the show which is what maceo and i have been doing since you last heard us so maceo uh, on your end what do you got dude i have i'm addicted to Fortnite, bro <laughs> <laughs> no shit I, are you 13 yeah, man, did you like, <laughs> I started doing the floss, you know, <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't know, man. One day I was just like, Hey, you know, I was, we were playing, I was playing Halo with my wife and I was like, Hey, you know, there's like a split screen thing that we could do on Fortnite. Like we could play split screen on Fortnite. Maybe we just try it. We'll just try it. And 20, you know, $20 later, I got the fucking, both of us got the battle pass. We're fucking playing like practically every day, trying to win, win a game. We usually win like at least one or two games every day, every session we play. So it's been like a daily thing. I already done leveled up the battle pass. I think we, I've only been playing it for like a month and I already leveled up the battle pass all the way to a hundred. Like it, it's crazy. And I would have thought that, you know, I would ever really be playing Fortnite because I always used to clown Fortnite, but now that it doesn't have the whole building uh, actual fort in it anymore, huh. they had the, the zero build game mode where you just run around and shoot. You, that's yeah. all you have to do. It makes the game way, way easier, way less stressful, way less mechanically skill wise. Cause I, I, I'm not gonna lie. It takes, it takes a lot of skill to sit there and press all the buttons and build up the shit all mm -hmm. quick while also being able to shoot people and and run away and pay attention to all that shit i can only pay attention to shooting my positioning and then using the actual abilities or the guns or grenades i can't do that while also managing how to fucking build a, a goddamn castle to fortify myself <laughs> so once i've started playing that zero build shit like it i've just been loving it and being able to run around and fucking kill superman and then thor beats my ass or something it's fun so I, that's what i've basically been playing this entire month i haven't pretty much anything i haven't been playing much of game pass anything which sucks because there's been a couple games that i do want to play on there i think it's called as enter the dusk or as the dusk falls or something with dusk in. it's like a story game that just came out on game pass a couple weeks back that i've been wanting to play but i've just been playing fortnite man is it bussin? Are you learning words? Bussin? Is it Liddy? <laughs> <laughs> no one says that anymore, Dan. Sorry. What, what's the <laughs> other one? But it doesn't have it doesn't have a like proximity chat or anything, so you don't really hear anybody talking. So. Well, you gotta, you gotta know the lingo. It's any lingo. <laughs> any, the, any the only lingo I know is like the cracked. They can say that's like their cracked. thing. Shit is cracked. No, oh, oh, that guy's cracked or whatever. Interesting. Yeah, I had like really cracked. good. I heard yeah. busted. I've heard busted a lot. That's busted. Oh, uh, that's probably some old shit. Anytime uh, my coworkers <laughs> like randomly, cause they're all in their twenties. Anytime they randomly dance, I'm like, is that a Fortnite dance? And they're like, no, <laughs> every time I, they, they get real pissed off. They're like, no, it's not. No, it's just, a, it's a TikTok dance. That's the other <laughs> one I ask. Yeah. So much it's better. TikTok dance? <laughs> no, I'm not on TikTok. All right. Well, just asking. Cause all you kids, that's what, you know, you learn your dances and whatnot from TikTok and Fortnite. So I don't know. I act like I'm 50 when I'm in there. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's, what's, what's been going on over you, man? I, I know I missed a couple of UFCs, unfortunately, but. Yeah, the last one ran quick. The the one that, that Bobby, Jimmy, and Remy, we all went to, and it just went so fucking fast, dude. It was, we thought they were going to put in filler fights, and they didn't. 
And, mm. and they just, that's what Bobby kept saying. They're like, okay, we're going to get some filler fights. Nope. They ran to the next one. So those have been good. But on, on my gaming end, I finally beat Kingdom of Hearts 3 or 2.9 is what it says on the screen Ooh. when you turn it on. So it took me a while, even though it's a short Kingdom of Hearts game, I think it's one of the shortest ones. It still took me a while as a parent. So I finally beat it and Leo got to watch and that's how I was able to play because he was interested in the game and seeing it. So we played it and beat it. I didn't cry at the end like Julian did on the stream for Lee's game, guys. <laughs> and I don't know what was sad about it. Maybe just the fact that, oh my God, finally Kingdom of Hearts 3 came out. Maybe that's why he was crying and he's yeah, seeing the credits enjoy. to the end of the game. I don't know. But I was just like, it's just the characters chilling or whatever. I don't know. I don't get the fucking story really. So whatever. <laughs> <laughs> like Kelly came in and there's three silver haired villains and she's like, who are they? I'm like, I don't know. Three Sephiroths. I, I, I don't fucking know. <laughs> so story doesn't make sense. I don't care. I played it. I beat it. And then I started Red Dead Redemption 2, which took forever to fucking download. That's an experience oh, yeah. for me. Yeah. It took like two days and oh, that's because I thought it would keep damn. downloading on rest mode and it doesn't. You have to turn the fucking Yikes. system on. Wow. Wow. So that pissed me off. Yeah, that that game is like, well, like 80 gigabytes or some shit like that. It's, it's like insane. insane. Yeah. Yeah. Damn. There's a download disc. And then when you put in the play disc, it also has another download that <laughs> it comes out of from there. Ooh, <laughs> Damn. But I, 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 it, it was, it's fun so far. I'm, I'm, I'm still in the prologue. That was my thing with the first Red Dead. Like that first, like three hours is such a fucking slog. You, mm. You've got your fucking wrangling fucking sheep and shit like <laughs> they really slow rolled the fuck out of that first one so I, I that's the whole reason why i never even played i never beat the first one I, I got like maybe six hours in and i was just so bored and my brother ended up beating me <laughs> so i never i never even finished the first one and i had no interest in the second one especially when they started talking about like all the shit that you gotta do and fucking hunting animals and shit i'm like man i don't got time for that well that's what has me a little bit worried and I need to stay on Red Dead if I'm going to play it and beat it because there's a lot of controls. It's way more complex than Kingdom of Hearts 3. And and now, yeah, you got to keep your stamina up. You got to, your health goes down over time, I think. So you got to eat because that affects it. So it's it's almost like that new Zelda game from what I hear. Uh, and I don't want to have to start doing all of that. And, and we'll see. Yeah. I, I, so far, it's fun, but I'm only in the tutorial. Yeah, so you got to do a lot, of, a lot of resource management and shit like that. Yeah, I don't, I don't have all that time <laughs> no neither do i but the other thing that i did check out is the resident evil netflix series i'm on episode four of eight right now and i'm gonna give it one more if if it doesn't really speed along in the plot then i'm probably gonna drop it but i it's it's overall pretty well done it's got some it's got the, your netflix thing where at the end of every episode there's a song you know how they always put that shit on there oh uh, yeah the song reflects what's happening, how the characters are feeling and all that shit. Yeah. But what's kept me interested is it does time jumps. It's kind of like the Witcher, but not as confusing, but it, it shows you the characters, the young versions of the characters where the characters are post apocalypse. And, and that's, it goes back and forth between those two. So you're kind of seeing how the outbreak happens again. And, and then you're following post outbreak and seeing, okay, now I see why this character is looking for her sister or whatever it is. And, that's yeah. what's kept me on so far, but overall, I'm, I'm going to give it one more and and we'll see. But it, but there's zombie shit in there. There's people, they're killing zombies left and right. Albert Wesker's in there, Umbrella, all that shit's in there. Oh, that's cool, man. I've been wanting, wanting to actually catch it, but uh, I've just been playing Fortnite, man. <laughs> like, there's this, I'm, I still haven't watched any of Harley Quinn. I want to watch some of that uh, Resident Evil. I actually caught the today i actually watched the brave man that netflix movie with ryan gosling and jesus christ captain america i don't remember his name right now for whatever reason but it was like a cia action type movie it was pretty cool i heard it was uh, awful was it good i enjoyed it i mean it, it wasn't it's not mission impossible or like born identity but it was decent it wasn't the worst thing i've ever seen but i enjoyed it uh, but again like the, the the thing that i didn't like about it was everyone was a smart alec ass quippy mm. type not not to the point where it's marvel but everyone ha always had some type of smart alec thing to say when someone asked them a question or said something to them or did something to them everyone was super witty i don't know that 
these people would be this witty in, <laughs> in a CIA type of environment. You might have one or two, but not every single fucking person. They're all brilliant. Um, They're all quips. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're all just fast, fast with the jokes. Everyone has a joke. So that, that part I didn't like about it, that some of the dialogue, but the action scenes were fine. It was fun. Nah, I like the story with it. But I also watched Everything, Everywhere, All at Once. I think that's the name of the, t- the movie. And that was actually really good. I did fall asleep for like 20 minutes because I was super t- tired. <laughs> and I watched it after I came home from work. But that was really good. The mu- I like the, the music. I like the cinematography. The acting's very well. The story. But I need to catch up to on, on some shows, on some movies. I still haven't seen Top Gun. Oh uh, man, I was going to yeah, I was gonna watch that today, but I didn't want to feel. I didn't feel like going through the hassle of like buying the rent, like renting it and all that shit. But I could just click on something on Netflix while I eat. So that's what I did today. Is it up to rent? But, I, I thought Top Gun because I've been looking for that, uh, and it's I, still I, only I in theaters sworn. from what I've seen. Oh, uh, maybe I don't know. I didn't even look it up. I, I just know that I want to watch it, but I don't want to watch it in theaters. <laughs> oh, okay, because <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I, there's things I want to watch, like you know, Super Dragon Ball Super movie comes out next yes. week, so I, and that's what I want to watch. And I also want to catch that Brad Pitt movie, Bullet Train. Yeah, Millennial Mike was raving about it. Yeah, so I do want to check that out, and uh, I got that going on. I, I already got like too many movies I want to see in a short amount of time, so mm-hmm. I'm like. I'll probably rent Top Gun. I figured it would have been up by now, but it also still makes money in the theater, so it might not actually be out. That's the thing that they said they were going to delay the home release because people are still going out to theaters to watch, it, Man, which is great. Damn. It's a great movie. Yeah, still need to catch it. So maybe I'm, I might catch it on a matinee or something. We'll see. As soon as you do, that's when they'll announce the video release. Watch. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, awesome, man. I'm I'm glad that the that you've been. It sounds like you've been keeping busy with a lot of Fortnite, so you found the game that you really enjoyed, and and that and that's awesome. I'm glad you were able to take some time off of Fortnite to do today's episode, man. I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, I was I was playing right before I got. <laughs> <laughs> of course you were. You're you're yeah, playing yeah. right now. <laughs> I was like, hey, man. If I don't, if I don't, that's why we started a little bit early. If I didn't get on, then I would have hopped in another game and I was like yo Dan I'm in the middle of the game hold on give me like 10 <laughs> minutes but I was just like you know what let me get off now we hop in do this and I'm not getting on again tonight I, I know mm-hmm. my wife probably can, can hear me saying that and she's gonna be like hell no we're playing some more we gotta get another win but I'm done <laughs> tonight is, is, it's over yeah I'm not sure I believe that one <laughs> but again <laughs> thank you and and please let them know where the they can find you Find me on Twitter at Mac the Murderer. You can find me on IG. Actually, don't even find me on IG. I don't post shit on there. <laughs> and you can find me in the Discord, Mac the Murderer as well. Check out the Discord, man. We be posting shit. It's hilarious in there. Uh, I don't post as much, but I do read everything. I, I'm, I pop in and I read stuff. Half the time, Bobby tags me or something. And I respond to him, but I'm always reading, checking to see what's going on. And if you tag me on something, I'll read it and I'll respond. Perfect. And if you want to be heard on the podcast, you can leave us a voicemail, speakpipe.com slash the reasons I'm broke. 90 seconds or less, you can leave a comment, a question, your thoughts on a cancellation that might have happened by Zaslav. And you might be heard right here on the show. So that's once again, speakpipe.com slash the reasons I'm broke. Otherwise, thank you so much for joining us this week. I've been Daniel, joined by Maceo and Brocat Core. All will be well. So first off, this is not financial advice to everyone out there, but Maceo, one of the Warner Brothers CFOs just bought half a million dollars in stock for Warner Brothers Discovery. Zaslav bought a million dollars in stock back in April. Sounds like uh, they know something we don't. (laughs) It sounds like they're about to go up in price or something crazy. Yeah, that that is nuts, man. Because if they're putting money up like that to get some shares, they're probably looking at this thing's going to go up at least 20% like soon. Or they're trying to stock up now for the the billions that they think some of these movies and 
that they they got in the pipe mm-hmm. and the merger that growth because that's instant growth you merge that together they're gonna say oh man we gained another 20 million subscribers here or something like that and the, that price that stock price is definitely gonna go up for sure so it, it, that's smart i don't want to put my money up <laughs> like i you know because usually when when people are putting money up like that they're already ahead of me <laughs> so you're right. gonna be behind we do know that they bought them at 14 bucks a share right now they're at 13 mm. bucks last time i checked so i don't know man long this game long game <laughs> could be the long game could be the long game one year high 52 week high was 29 bucks so in the last year they were up to 29 now they're down to 13 so i don't know man if they restore the Snyderverse, that could be a shit ton of money i don't know <laughs> yeah, they might do a they might do a stock split yeah maybe the price drop a little bit lower but then they they make it up with the the increase in stock so there's a lot of stuff they can do but it makes sense if they're buying the, the crazy part is that they're buying outside of their job like usually they get stocks as like bonuses that's true so the fact that they're buying stock out of their job they really believe that they're about to turn the ship around that's cool something's happening it's happening yeah. 